longer a dirty word in the mouths and in the thoughts of our own people. We must make sure that essentially the only form of social concern that is left is patriotism, because it ties people together in their difference within a coherent group, in their inequality, but it ties them together. It's the only social glue that is left. It's the only trump that allows individual freedom, but allows group identity, allows both. The great mistake of the whole of the left is to think that they could build social views of what society should be, what humanity should be, whilst dispensing with identity. Faith-based, racial, cultural, national city. Things are based upon identity. You are an individual because you can join a group. Occasionally you subtract yourself from it in terms of judgment. But you can join. When everyone asks you who you are, you give a surname, you give family details and so on, age and so on. It's 22 in my case. You know, you give this sort of thing, but deep down you give a collective and group-based identity, even for the most individualistic of people like me, in a way. But you have to have a group to belong to. We're hardwired genetically for it anyway. Because without that, we don't feel solidarity with anyone else. And without that, you can't have a society. And if you can't have a society at all, it's just ghettoised ants. Go to inner parts of American cities and you'll see what that relates to. Our music isn't gangster rap. Our cities are not built as shanty towns like in Brazil. Our glory could yet still be before us. We have to cease thinking that we're a people with a great past and it's all going to go. Like the Greeks, it's just a few statues and a few monuments and it's all downhill. It doesn't have to be downhill. Yeah. What we have to do is to revive and to think that we can revive. And but to do this, we have to sweep out the politicians who now exist. We have to get rid of the Tories in the south of England. We have to get rid of Labour in the north of England. We have to get rid of Labour in Wales. We have to get rid of Plaid in Wales. We have to get rid of the uh, pseudo-Celtic nationalists in Scotland, the SNP. We've already got rid of Ron Davies here in Wales, you know. <laughs> Good old Ron. He, I, I've been informed by the uh, North Welsh organiser that he has a new movement. If you pardon the phrase, <laughs> Wales. Oh, forward Wales. That's a good slogan, isn't it? Forward Wales. Fair enough. I'm sure there's a radical absence of female members in that group. <laughs> but all joking aside, people need something different, and it's not going to be UKIP. They're channelers, as I call them. There are all these people who say, oh, well, a little bit patriotic, just a little bit, a little bit, you know. In Wales, in England, I'll vote EU. My father said to me a couple of years ago, I've done something really extreme. I said, cut me out of the wheel. You know, what? What have you done? And he said, I voted for UKIP. UKIP! And I thought, no. Um, but then I thought, for somebody who's only ever voted Tory, in some ways that's a radical gesture. Because you might vote somebody else after that. It's only one step beyond, one step beyond to terror, one step beyond that <laughs> demonic line. But once you've crossed, there's a sense, you've sort of got to the edge of the zebra, haven't you? You, you, you? There's a truck coming and you feel you can't cross yet. But it's interesting, if all of those millions, you pile up all those useless UKIP votes, and what have they done for anyone since they got in the European Parliament, eh? You can speak for two minutes. That's all you can do as a Euro MP. You get a big wedge and you speak for two minutes, only if you form a block. They won't go with the far right, they sit on their own, it's meaningless. But it's a break in the old structure. Yeah. Even the BBC regards UKIP as dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> and, but they're channeling all of that patriotism, even that EU vote, and if it breaks out beyond them, it's very, very interesting what could happen. BBC ran a deep poll about six months ago in which they said that 60 to 70 percent of people were frightened of inter-ethnic violence in the society, but people thought the British National Party was slightly nasty and extreme, but they were telling the truth, unlike the other parties. And they said that power may well have been right. BBC was shot rigid by this, because it was a deep poll of what people really thought when they were quite relaxed, and that they feared for their future, and this was before the economic crisis had begun to grip. This is the reality, under all the lies and the smoke screen and the punch and duty value at Westminster. This is the reality. But if people want to change it, 
They know what they have to do. They have to raise money for this organisation, they have to leaflet and canvas for this organisation, they have to stand for this organisation, they have to come up here and speak, and next time somebody from the audience, come up, you know, confront the terror, you know, come up into the lights and speak, it's not as bad as all that. People have to do these sorts of things, because if they won't do these sorts of things, in 50 years, there'll be no coherent society left. This is the time, in this 20 year to 20, 30 year period. If there is a large block of British national and right-wing MPs in the parliaments and structures that have been created in this society, in the coming generation, it can be turned around. It can be changed. The whole system fears that this could occur. We must make sure that it does occur. Yeah, yeah, Here in Wales and in Britain, this country is not over. We are still alive. There is still plenty to do. I ask you to support this party to support our people, to support their culture, to support our future. Thank you very much.